there are different tools to develop cloud native applications and deploy these to different cloud providers. However, debugging these are painful once you deploy these into your cloud environment. In this video, we will take a look at how to debug an application which is deployed inside a Kubernetes cluster. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. If you have seen my previous videos, I would have shown you how to deploy the application using scaffold using which you can do live reloading of your application. Here we are going to see another tool from Google, which is called the cloud code. Cloud code is basically a plugin, which you can stick it into VS code or IntelliJ and add your JMX ports to your application and snoop onto your application right from your IDE. We are going to see both the examples in this particular video. For the first part, I'll show you how to do remote debugging using VS code. I'm going to use the same application which we saw during the scaffold example. I'll use the same Spring Boot application. If you don't have any Spring Boot application, check out the link in the description below and clone that particular repo. You can use the same example to do remote debugging and check how cloud code works. I have opened the same project which we saw last time. Let me close all the windows. So this is the project structure. I have a scaffold YAML which defines what is my image name and where are my deployment YAMLs which I need to pick up. There is a deployment YAML which has replica 1 and it is a Spring Boot example. We are building this image locally and then we are pushing it. We also have a service. Uh, with respect to the code, there is nothing much. There is a hello controller which has hello YouTube. So what I have done here in this ID is I have just added a breakpoint here. So whenever I hit my endpoint called slash hello, break and then stop here after I deploy into my Kubernetes cluster. For the demo purpose, I'm going to use Minikube, which is installed locally in my machine. So I have Minikube here. Let's check what are the different pods which are running. There are no pods. Kubectl get all. Get all should show what are the different resources. There is nothing. Let me clear it. So the environment is clean. Now coming back to VS code, in order to use remote debugging, you need to install the cloud code plugin. So cloud code, as I mentioned, is a tool and it comes as a plugin. You can go to the extension section and then search for cloud code. You will get this particular extension. Right now the version is 1.0.1. .1. You can install this. Cloud code tightly integrates with scaffold and it starts deploying using scaffold and then integrates it into your IDE using scaffold as its interface layer. Since I already have scaffold in my project, I don't have to worry about it. Now let me go to the debugging option. Now that everything is set, we need to create our profile. We need to create our configuration basically. The moment I click on the green box here, which is the debug option, it shows me what are the different options available for me. After installing cloud code, I'll be able to see this new option called cloud code debug. The moment I click on cloud code debug, it allows me to provide different configuration options into my launch.json. Launch.json is basically the debug option where I can plug in different options for me to debug. For example, if I have the application running locally, I can use Java attach, but here I'm going to use the cloud code debug plugin. So I'm just going to select cloud code debug, attach my Java process. Once my application is up and running, I'll be able to attach that particular option here. However, I need to add another option so that I can launch my Java configuration. So I'm going to select launch first and then attach later. So attach process is similar to how we debug remotely. So here I'm just going to attach my process on 5005 and my application name is Spring Boot example. This is basically the pod selector, basically the label of the pod. I'll show you the label of the pod in a bit. So the label of the pod resides here in the deployment.yaml my label is basically spring boot example and the key is app so the same configuration has been applied to my configuration here if you have multiple labels you can attach them here but i have only one label so i have two configurations one is for the launch and the other one is for attach so in order to do debugging 
I can directly launch attach. If I want to just launch my configuration, basically apply my scaffold onto my cluster, then I can do launch. But if I want to debug my application, I will have to use the attach option. Since I have Minikube locally installed, my kube cutter is pointing to Minikube. I can do kubectl get pod to watch the pods. Let me move this little bit ahead here and let's launch the configuration. Now the configurations which I added here shows up here. So since we are going to first launch the application, let's try launching it. So we know that the application is deployed. First, we need to deploy our application. So that is why I'm click clicking on the launch option. The moment I click on the launch debug configuration, it asks me which context should I deploy to. So I can define a namespace inside my Minikube. Right now I'm going to deploy to my default namespace in the Minikube. So I'll just say yes. The moment I say yes, my application should be deployed. So I can see that my containers are coming up. So it looks like the container is up and running. Now coming back to the terminal here, let me remove this. You can see these are the logs which are coming from the pod directly. Since I have used cloud code, this allows me to directly get the logs from the cluster and then show in the terminal. So this is what you would have seen with scaffold. So since cloud code uses scaffold, scaffold is getting me the logs directly here. If you click on the cloud code option in the left nav here, it shows what are the different configurations inside your cluster. So I'm using the Minikube option and the default namespace is what I'm using. It also shows what are the different namespaces, what are the different resources inside the namespace, for example, deployment, what are the different deployments. If you want to see number of replicas, if you want to see the configuration, everything can be seen here, which is another feature which I liked inside the cloud code. You can directly have a UI kind of an option from your cluster right on your IDE. Now to debug this application, I have already added a debug point inside this particular REST endpoint. So in order to debug the application now, I can flip my debug option from launch to attach. The moment I click on attach, my debug configuration is directly attached to my application. So if I look at the logs, I can see that my port configuration is redirecting to 5005, which is the remote debugging port, which has been enabled for my IDE with the application. So now let me open this application in the browser. So in order to do that, I have a service. So I'm just going to hit the endpoint basically. Uh, okay. So we have this endpoint. So this error is coming from Spring Boot. So the application is up and running. Now I need to hit the endpoint called slash hello. The moment I click on slash hello, if you notice, my context directly switched to the browser because the browser got the debug point hit. So my remote debugging is working. And how is it working? Like any other remote debugging, you will have to have a JMX port enabled for a Java application. If you're using Go or any other application, it's slightly similar. There is a port which is open dedicatedly for connecting the IDE with the application. In our case, we had used the port 5005. You can use any port and that configuration we had provided in the launch.configuration file. The moment I resume this, I should be able to see the response. Hello, YouTube. Yeah, I can see that I've got hello, YouTube. So this is how you can debug your application using VS code. So imagine if you have deployed this to a Google cloud cluster or a EKS cluster or an AKS cluster, you can still debug with the same way because cloud code leverages the kubectl. So once you log in to your cluster using kubectl, cloud code will be able to remote debug your application when you're using scaffold. Now moving on to the next IDE, which is IntelliJ IDEA. Let me stop this. Uh, let me close. And I will kill all my pods. Meanwhile, we can open our application in IntelliJ. So the application is present here. I have opened it already. So it's the same um, project. I have not changed anything in it. I have a debug point inside IntelliJ and same way like how we had installed a plugin inside VS code, we will have to install cloud code inside IntelliJ. So you can search for cloud code in your marketplace and then you should be able to get it. I have installed it. Same way to debug our application, you can add a configuration from the debug option here. There should be something called cloud code Kubernetes. The moment you click on it, you can get a, you will get a new configuration. You can name it as, let's say debug 
Kubernetes. This automatically picks the scaffold configuration. The project is having a scaffold, so it picks up the scaffold YAML and also it picks up what is the profile you want to use. By default, I don't have any profile in the scaffold YAML, so it's using default profile. If you want to pass any additional environment variables, you can pass that here. I'm not passing anything. Uh, also, it has plugged onto my mini cube using the cube cuttle and it is going to deploy into my mini cube. That's it. There is no configuration which you require to be added here. In case you want to take the image from a different repository, you can directly do that here. You can add your remote repository and allow cloud code to take the images from those repositories. So I've added the configuration and let's click on the debug option. It's fairly simple and straightforward like how we did in VS Code. The moment I did this, okay, I did not do a watch. So my pod would have got created, yeah. The pod would have got created, this is a new pod. So the application is up and running and my browser is connected automatically because by default it uses the 5005. Now to connect to my application, I'll get the URL. The moment I hit hello, this should take me to the browser again. Yep, but in this case, it is IntelliJ IDEA. So my remote debugging option still works. And if you're familiar with IntelliJ, you know how to navigate your debugger within IntelliJ IDEA. So you can leverage the same debugger which is present inside IntelliJ IDEA to navigate within your application. So I'm going to resume this now and this will return in us Hello YouTube. This is how you can leverage cloud code to do remote debugging from your IDE into your application. Obviously there are different tools. For example, there are tools like Telepresence and Squash which you can leverage to do remote debugging. I just showed you one most popular option which is the cloud code from Google. The links for the GitHub repositories of the sample project and the Google project is all mentioned in the description below. Do take a look at it and then give it a try. And also let me know if this video was useful in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.